Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I welcome all of you for the uh, next part of our series discussing the neurological history taking and physical examination. In our previous part, we have uh, mentioned and stressed on that the history taking and the proper neurological examination aims to help the examiner, the physician, the neurologist, the neurosurgeon from studentship until consultant uh, position. It, it should help in number one, localizing the lesion. I should know where is the lesion from my history taking and my physical examination and this will help me in performing the proper investigation on the area which should be investigated. Now unfortunately with more and more advances in radiological modalities I see many of the uh, physician consultants and of course it is inherited to uh, interns and students that they go immediately for the investigation without knowing really where to investigate and we will see this in a minute now the second aim from the history and physical examination is to let me think on which pathology category does this patient is in for example is it vascular is it neoplastic and so forth and we will see also this in the next part of our series. Well, uh, let's start with this uh, scenario. Uh, a patient uh, came to the emergency room, you have seen him, and he's complaining that um, he has um, severe weakness of both lower limbs. Now, I want you to take a minute and think about how to approach this patient. Well, looking at um, this figure, you will see that most people will think of both lower limb weakness as a spinal disease. Of course, taking a, a proper history and uh, performing the physical examination needed, uh, they might be right. Uh, let's say that this patient uh, was asked and he volunteered that he has uh, back pain. The back pain is localized to the lower thoracic upper lumbar uh, area. Um, he also was asked and he started to uh, volunteer of the information that he's having a urinary uh, problem. And also uh, both lower limb sensory uh, deficit. Now on physical examination, I have to differentiate between two categories. The first one will be directing uh, the uh, physician toward a lesion in the coda equina as well as the nerve roots. Other words, and that's to say uh, peripheral nervous system. This will include that the patient will be having hypotonia, hyporeflexia, he might have muscle wasting as well as there is absence of Babinski sign and now it became very clear that we should do an MRI or a CT scan of the spine at uh, this area looking for a pathology as an example of a tumor compressing of the uh, coda equina in this case. The other question which is really uh, surprising for some is can this patient have an intracranial lesion causing both lower limbs to be weak? Now to reach this um, uh, answer uh, we have to go back to our knowledge of uh, anatomy which is of importance of course. Uh, please look carefully with me for this uh, classical diagram of the uh, cortical representation of the human being. 
you will notice that the uh, face, the hand, the trunk is on the lateral surface of the cortex while the lower limb is in the medial or interhemispheric uh, surface. Now this will tell us that a lesion that is compressing both cortices on the right and the left can compress, irritate, make weakness or decrease the cortical sensation on both lower limbs mimicking a spinal uh, lesion well um, with this scenario uh, the uh, person has missed uh, asking the patient about uh, chronic headache um, it was missed to notice repeated uh, vomiting uh, no uh, evidence of increased intracranial pressure was looked for uh, during the examination in this category we look for upper motor neuron lesion so we look for uh, um, hypertonia, hyperreflexia, the presence of uh, Babinski sign, the presence of uh, clonus and the cortical uh, sensory loss. Uh, in addition for increased intracranial pressure a papilledema has to be uh, looked for so if you have something in suspicion you will look for but if you are not thinking about the pathology it will be uh, missed now having uh, this step by step history and physical examination will direct you to the proper investigation you will immediately uh, think of doing a CT scan and or MRI of the head this is an example of a fox parasagittal meningioma that is compressing the right hemisphere extending subfalcine to the opposite left hemisphere and compressing both motor cortices and this area is the motor cortex for both lower limbs causing paraparesis with intracranial hypertension this is one of many examples of how a good history and physical examination can make a difference in having the proper diagnosis and of course the start of the best therapy for our patients hope for the best assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh